Thomas Episcopal Church and School in San Antonio, Texas, and welcome to Morning Prayer for the morning of Monday, May the 20th, and this is Right One Monday. Today let's pray for peace on earth, and let's pray for the peace of Jerusalem. In the Anglican Communion today, we're praying for the Diocese of Ely and the Church of England. And in our own diocese this week, we're praying for the Church of the Holy Spirit in San Antonio and the Church of the Holy Spirit in Dripping Springs. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for David, our bishop, and for Mike and Ali, our priests. And as always, from wherever you are, please bring your own concerns, intentions, and thanksgivings to prayer this morning. So let's start on page 40. We are in ordinary time now, and so we're moving uh, back to where we really spend most of our time during the year. O oh, send out thy light and thy truth, that they may lead me and bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy dwelling. And on page 41, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. And on page 44, let's say the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. Come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh. For he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. We have three psalms today, and um, we're starting the Psalter over again. I suspect that's because we're, we've gone back now to ordinary time. So we're going to say Psalms 1, 2, and 3. And that begins on page 585. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked, they are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt, and the princes plot together against the Lord and against his anointed? Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. 
Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear and with trembling bow before him, lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. Lord, how many adversaries I have, how many there are who rise up against me, how many there are who say of me, there is no help for him and his God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and go to sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear the multitudes of people who set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord, set me free, O my God. Surely you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's go to our readings. We're going to go today to the letters of St. John. Uh, you remember we uh, left Paul writing to the Ephesians, and so now we're, we're going to go and spend some time in these letters um, of St. John's. These are, other than Revelation and the Gospel of St. John, and these are the writings that we have of his. And it's interesting to look at John's, John's writings. Um, he, he writes more about love than probably the others do, um, even St. Paul, although St. Paul di does talk about it. But St. John's point of view is a little bit different. Paul is writing to the churches, and he's writing very specific um, things to them. And it, it helps to know that at that time, um, that a lot of the churches were, were facing, they didn't really know exactly what Christianity looked like. I know I've said that before. Um, there were also a lot of teachers who were teaching different versions, um, and so it was kind of hard for a young church to know exactly what was, you know, what, what do Christians believe, just as simple as that, what do, what do Christians believe? And so Paul was writing very much to the churches, whereas John is writing a little bit more, um, I mean, he is, he's writing to people, but he's, he's writing a little bit more I don't know, I'll call it philosophically, than specific uh, things that he's talking about. So anyway, um, we'll talk more about these letters as we go along. Today we are in the first letter of St. John, chapter 3. We're going to begin with verse 18 and go through chapter 4, verse 6. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of whom you have heard that it is coming, and now it is already in the world. Little children, you are from God and have conquered them, for the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world, 
Therefore what they say is from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us, and whoever is not from God does not listen to us. From this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our first canticle for today is the first song of Isaiah, um, and you won't find that in the right one section of morning prayer. It's actually in the right two section. Hang on, let me, I wrote down the, it's on page 86. But because this is right one, we say the King James version of it. So I hope that kind of helps to explain why you look for the first song of Isaiah, but you might not find it because we're sort of, sort of taking it from the right two, but reading it in the King James. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall you say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And in our Gospel reading for today, we're in the Gospel of St. Matthew, and we're skipping ahead to chapter 11. We're going to begin that chapter with verse 1 and go through verse 6. Now when Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message in their cities. And when John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our second canticle for today is the Song of the Redeemed. Again, we are borrowing from Rite 2, and so this is on page 94, but um, we're reading the King James Version of it. Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And let's say the Apostles' Creed on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And on page 55, let's say Suffrages A. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. 
for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. And our collect for today is the collect for proper two, and that's on page 177. O Almighty and most merciful God, of thy bountiful goodness, keep us, we beseech thee, from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready both in body and soul, may with free hearts accomplish those things which belong to thy purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And on page 57, the Collect for Guidance. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on page 58, our prayer for mission. O God, who hast made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and didst send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold, pour out thy Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on page 59, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let's take a few moments for reflection. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all ever.